Last week, Barack Obama was talking about the global war on terror and how he wants to see a little bit of a paradigm shift, but are we really buying what he has to sell? Let's take a look. Neither I nor any president can promise the total defeat of terror. We will never erase the evil that lies in the hearts of some human beings, nor stamp out every danger to our open society. Our systematic effort to dismantle terrorist organizations must continue. But this war, like all wars, must end. That's what history advises. That's what our democracy demands. Now, that was literally an hour-long speech, and in that very short clip, uh, you know, he starts it off by saying, neither I nor any other president can stop this, uh, stop terrorism, right? I'm paraphrasing a little bit, and all I could think about at that time was, oh, those private contractors are like, cha-ching. Uh. This, this global war on terror is definitely going to continue. At least that was my takeaway from his speech, but John, maybe you had a different takeaway. Can you share well, what you think? I, I definitely think that that's not the message that he's trying to deliver. I, I agree with almost every single point that he said there. I was ready for that speech 10 or 11 years ago. I think, you know, you have the national freak out because we're attacked in a very large way that we hadn't been for a number of years. I totally get that, but then you have to move past it. The fact that it took us 12 to 13 years to move past that I think does not speak well of American government or the American people. Like our, our tendency, tendency towards xenophobia, towards militarism, jingoism, all of that. I think that's an unfortunate characteristic that you can track back hundreds of years through America. Um, I, the problem that I have with his speech is that I don't buy it really. I don't think that he has, I guess, the, the testicular fortitude to fight back against the military industrial complex. I think that they have too much power in this country, the fact that as bad as the sequester was, you know, we're still going to be spending unknown amounts of money on these, uh, these different boondoggles, the, the, the airplanes, the tanks, the nuclear powered uh, aircraft carriers and stuff like that. I think that we should be ready, but I don't think that we will move past it in the way that he implies it's that we will. It's an outlandish uh, statement to say like, we're, we're done with the war on terror. It's like me saying like, I'm never gonna gain weight after another Thanksgiving. <laughs> I mean, it makes no sense at all. It's like, we can't just like, pull out and be like, we're finished. First of all, we haven't finished anything. I mean, McCain is over in Lebanon trying to get an early bird special or something over there. I'm not quite sure what he's doing, but you know, the fact is we are involved in these wars and we can't just sort of say, okay, now I'm gonna pull out our military and that's it, the war is over. I, I mean, those I, I wars mean, are still going on whether we're there or not, and the truth is we are still involved. Yeah, we are still involved, and, and by watching that speech, I didn't get the sense that he said, hey, we're going to pull out and we're done with it, we're finished. I got the sense in that speech that he was trying to appease everyone, because <laughs> on one hand, when he was talking about drones, he was being very fair to himself by trying to defend uh, you know, the decisions he made with the drone attacks. Uh, he was saying, well, you know, you can use the drones and it's, it's better preci precision. And uh, what, we, what we did with uh, Anwar al-Awlaki was something that we had to do. Uh, so there was a lot of you know, making excuses. I don't know if making excuses is making the right excuses. way. It but was you know, he was, he was defending over. himself a lot. There was a lot of Obama defending himself, but then when he was really talking about the changes, I mean, he went to Guantanamo and how he's really going to focus on shutting well, Guantanamo that was down. To be shut down in the, during exactly. his first administration. I mean, I, I find it un, un, unethical to continue to have Guantanamo running and then to be able to say a speech like this. Well, you know, I uh, kind of sound well. I agree with all of you, and uh, I agree with John that uh, he, I don't buy his speech. Um, he wants to play at both sides uh, and, and he wants to have, hey, we got to stop this drone war, but I'm not gonna and we're gonna keep doing it. What he really did was he promised to bring the drone attacks back to the Bush level. Yeah. That's what he really did. That's his big liberal speech about drone killing. Mm -hmm. But uh, that, that's what I think about. He's playing both sides. Uh, it, I've never seen a guy who's able to distance himself from his own policies. He's talking about his own policies as if they're not his, like if, as if he inherited these things instead of what he really did was ramp them up and yeah, become right. uh, the Bush policy on steroids, pa pardon that overused cliche. Um, I, you, you know, it is, and then when that woman heckled him, or they called it heckled, the woman from Code Pink. Yeah, I yes. loved her. Yeah. So she got it all out, right? She was, see, so he was supposed to take the drone strikes out of the CIA's hands and put it into the military's hands. He didn't do that. And she was talking about, you know, what about all these thousands of Muslims that she said it right to his face. What about all the thousands of Muslims that you've killed? Are you going to now give them reparations? Are you going to give them money for the pe innocent people you've killed? Because that's what would make us safe. She said drone killings is what makes us less safe. Anyway, Barack Obama's speech was just more Barack Obama bullshit. When he's talking, I love 
love him. I yeah. love him. You know, it's like, oh my God, yes, he's saying all the things that make my hair stand up. And I, and then I think you think about what he's saying, and you're like, oh, he's full of shit again. I, it's it's that speech of yeah. I'll put on a comfortable shoe and go march with you, and then he never fucking does that. And I that. think that's the part of uh, you know Barack Obama that's so disappointing. I mean, when I think back to uh, 2008 and when he got elected, how excited I was personally, yes, yes. and I voted for him, and I was such an avid supporter of Barack Obama, and then, you know, he ends up being worse than the Bush administration when it comes to civil liberties, when it comes to foreign policy. I mean, he didn't just continue what the Bush administration did. As, as yeah. J Jimmy mentioned, you know, he accelerated, he amplified. And, and it's, it's just so he's not prosecuting. Disastrous. He's not prosecuting banks. He's not prosecuting banks to m m launder drug money. But he is going after the medical marijuana clinics, right? Mm -hmm. He's kind of he's got a totally upside down, fucked up way of uh, governing. And uh, he's trying to be all things to all people. He has no center. He has no testicles, as John said. And he's a shitty sure. president. I mean, uh, he's a sh he's he's, he's better guy. than the guy. <laughs> he's better than the guy he was running against. And that's yeah. what he's counting on that they're going to give a shitty. Uh, uh, opponent to him, which they did. They gave him John McCain and Richie Rich, and he was able to beat those guys. I, I think specific to, to this speech about moving on from our concept of this endless war on terror and the fact that you know, anytime some group in a country strikes us, we need to invade that country. I think <laughs> I think he's right in that we need to move past that. I think that he is intelligent enough to understand what causes terrorism. I don't think that Bush really did. I think that he bought into the bullshit about they hate our freedoms and, and all that BS. If he but understood the, that, then why would he continue drone strikes yes. uh, that kill but, innocent really, civilians yes. and innocent I, I children? That. But really fast, I want to say that he is speaking to a country that does not understand in large part what causes terrorism. I think that the average American has only a very shallow understanding of what blowback is and American interventions in the Middle East and how you know it's our chickens coming home to roost and all that. So he has to govern to a population that does not really understand what's actually going on. Or understand in, in, our role in a global society, that we can't just simply come in and out when yeah. we choose in the, these other countries. I'm not necessarily buying what you're selling, John, because mm -hmm. when you really think about it, okay, the average American that doesn't care about foreign policy and doesn't foc American. that doesn't focus on, you know, what Obama is doing abroad, are they going to sit down and listen to this hour-long speech where he's trying to make excuses for himself and appease everyone on every single side of the spectrum? I'm not saying it's a great speech, but mm -hmm. I'm saying he has to keep in mind not only the the government and the military industrial complex constraints on his policy, but also the understanding of the audience that he's speaking to, which does not understand these the, these issues at an advanced level. The audience that he was really speaking to, he's correct. You're correct. They don't under. It was the press, and they don't understand these <laughs> that, issues. That is, right. And yeah. they do not. If you saw CNN, the way they covered it, they all bought the bullshit that he had said he was going to say. Yet he didn't say the things he was. He said he was going to say. That's complicated. But what he th what that speech was basically him saying: we well, have to balance security mm -hmm. with the Constitution. And what I say is. There is no balancing. With, there's just the Constitution. You don't balance the Constitution with a bunch of unconstitutional shit, and then you meet in the middle. There's just the Constitution, that's and that's it. Right. But yeah. it's, also, it's also just <laughs> saying these large statements about things that don't make any sense at all. I mean, I, that's why I was sort of comparing it to saying you're going to lose weight. I mean, it's like there's not a specific target that you can say, we've ended the war on terrorism today. We can check that off the list. When there are terrorist organizations that we don't really know what they're doing and when they're going to launch again, what we do know is everything we've done has not worked. Drones has not worked. And he, Guantanamo but, Bay but has he, not worked. Drones has made situations and that's where invading speech. countries yes. not worked. How many more Muslims uh -huh. do we have to kill before these terrorists stop attacking us? Yeah.